Okay, welcome to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Something a little bit different today. I've got some guests. Do you want to introduce yourselves first and then we'll take it from there? Sure. Hello everyone, my name's Ram and I'm from Guy's Leather Kit. My name's Eric, I'm from Chicago Auto Pros and Car Supplies Warehouse in the United States. I'm Malboro from Lima, Peru, from Monkey Auto Detailing and Monkey Auto Body Shop. Okay, now these guys have been enjoying wax stock and um, popped down to see me and have a chat about all things detailing. I thought we could do a video at the same time because it'd be interesting to sort of find out what these guys do, their kind of role within the detailing industry in their countries and all that sort of stuff. So Ram, you know. <laughs> so Ram's just started his new venture, Geist Leather Care. So Ram is a leather specialist and he's building a line of products. That's right. Um, you've just got this new product as well, which you've been um, showcasing down at Waxstock. So yes. tell us about this. Yeah, so this here is a, a, a steering wheel restoration kit for black steering wheels. So there's so many black leather steering wheels out there that are beaten up. Um, and often that's the one that sort of really lets the car down. Yeah. So we wanted to bring something out that you know people can just buy this kit, do themselves, and restore their steering wheel, yeah. and pretty much have a new steering wheel in like 20 minutes, 30 this, minutes. This is a good idea, isn't it? Because this is like probably one of the most common problems you get on any car that's mm -hmm. over 8,000 miles or so, the steering wheel starts wearing out. Absolutely. And um, so you can actually save the steering wheel. We're gonna try and put this product to the test after this guy. So we'll see if it works. But what, so what did you get in the kit? So you get the color, yeah. obviously. Yeah, you get the, the, the dye and the pigment. So you, that, that's black, that's a one step, so just apply it using a sponge. But prior to that, you've just got to clean, um, so got de -grease. degrease. Yeah, so clean and degrease, sand if necessary. So if it's rough, um, you know, sand that down, apply the dye using the sponge, um, and then just a day later, ideally, put the blocker on. Right. So you've got all, you've actually got everything in the kit to prep it, Yeah. put the colour down, and you're done. Yeah, and I know this is only a 50 mil die, but this goes a long way. You probably, that. if you're just doing that on the steering wheel, you'd probably be able to do that at least two, maybe even three times, depending on how bad mm -hmm. the wheel is. Yeah, you know? brilliant. So there's a new product for you guys. That's yeah. a, that's a yeah, breaking news. <laughs> it's simple. Yes. It's simple, just, it's, it's, it's a missing. Yeah. Right? We always had the technology, but it's never been simple. And putting a DIY kind That's of solution it. as well. Yeah. And do you want to tell us about what, what you do? We've been just pat chatting for the Man, last hour, so that, I've got an idea. That's everyone's question. So like, I'm I'm kind of known as like the networker relationship guy. So like yeah. we mentioned, you know, I ran G Technic in the United States for five years. I've been helping Ram out in the U.S. market for for probably pretty close to about the same. So yeah. I know a couple of little things about the United Kingdom, right? Um, we were making jokes actually yesterday where. Um, and we, this is no secret, but we have, as Americans, we have a way of taking things from other places like the United Kingdom. We put our spin on them and then they end up back. Yeah. Right. Which is kind of how <laughs> we met Alvaro from Monkey down in Peru. Um, we've done a lot of stuff with um, training, product development, um, a lot of business training, really trying to formalize the industry, um, help lift it up. Right, where it's not so behind closed doors, it's not so much like a, just a car wash, there's a couple of other things, right? Yeah. Um, and, and Jason, who unfortunately can't be here, you know, with what he's done with Chicago Auto Pros, has just really put that high-end level of luxe detailing or high-end detailing on the map. Yeah. Um, so getting to work with all the brands and all the product development and really you know, mixing that all together, it's a lot. So you know the industry inside out. Yeah, but it's been... super cool. We're just driven by passion like yourself. Yeah, just, it's an, it is an addiction. It, it is. is an addiction. Is. And Alvaron, we've got to get the name yeah. right. <laughs> Alvaron's got five detailing workshops in Peru. So that's kind of like an emerging market mm -hmm. for, um, for uh, detailing. You think it's spreading all around the world. And we were saying earlier on, if you can get in the country first, mm -hmm. establish yourself with detailing services, then there's going to be good business there. So you're also doing all right, because you've got five. Yeah, <clears throat> Peru is crazy. Um, I'm detailing, it's growing up faster. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also the Rupes trainer. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. trainer there. So now we are here to get more knowledge about how it's working here, new products like guys. Um, yeah. So you could move into doing the leather refinishing as well for your business. So then you've got coatings, you've got the detailing stuff, you've got leather refinishing. Um, so you've got the whole whole smorgasbord of kind of services. Yeah, and he, he's also got a body shop as well. So they do Has like he? exterior, yeah. like you repairs can, and things like that. You do one of my cars for me. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a long way to take it. <laughs> Excellent. So that's a good business then. 
So do you, do you, do you sell products, do you sell G-Technic stuff as yeah, well? Yeah, we sell G-Technic, uh, rugby's, all sorts of... Yeah. yeah You've got like an online store in Peru. Not right? yet, but... Well, that could be, that could be huge. Could <laughs> yeah. Be. Maybe soon. Maybe soon. We are working in the website. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just super cool that, you know, we see a lot of, especially guys in the UK and the US being kind of the two major markets for the world when it comes to this stuff. Mm. <clears throat> They're scared to spend the money to travel to a trade show, like a wax stock or a SEMA, a mobile tech. This guy came two days. It took him. He went from Peru to Colombia, Colombia to the UK, and the business covered all of it for him. Yeah. Right. So for you know anyone listening or watching, to be you know like the money's there. Make the money, set it aside, go and grow your edu- you know your knowledge base. Get out there for your customers. Yeah. He's proof that you can do it. Yeah. Well, I think getting in with a good brand is important as well. Mm. Like with J Technic, that's a very strong mm. brand established. Mm. So, you know, you've got a good product there. And it's like, if people in Peru see the G-Technic stuff, they'll be drawn to it. And that will help grow your business as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's really cool as well. Yeah, I mean, I was blown away by, by seeing his Instagram uh, account. You know, when you see the work that he's done, the number of people that, you know, are following him, um, liking his work, commenting on it, and the interaction and the engagement that he's getting. It shows, I, I never thought Peru would probably even remotely be a market for detailing or leather repair. Yeah, or every country's related, got a petrol yeah, yeah. yeah. So you could expand out to the whole of South America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. And, and, and then into North America. <laughs> <laughs> but our first training down there was before COVID, so 2018. Yeah. And he, I mean, there was 20, like 20 operators from Peru and then Panama, Colombia, Mexico, because a lot of the travel is easier. Yeah. Right. So like, like he's still to this day, like he can't get in the USA. Yeah. So that's why he's like, I miss you guys. I'm like, come to England. He's like, we'll be there. Really? Yeah. That's what happened. So basically he's, they've got such a huge backlog um, Alvaro was saying about just, just trying to get a US visa since COVID. So they, that, that backlog is still there where it's taken a year and a half to get a visa. Jeez. So he's just not being able to travel to the US. That's why when the opportunity came to come to Waxstock in the UK, he goes visa and he was like, let's go. Yeah. You know? yeah. Cool. Right, I've got a question for you guys. <laughs> let's go. Some controversial things. <laughs> Snow foaming. Is it all BS or does it actually serve a purpose? Well... This is something we've covered on the channel loads, but I'm interested in your thoughts on this. So I always would, even back in my shop day, for marketing purposes, for drawing attention, for getting customers in the door. Yeah. There's nothing better. Yeah. There's nothing better. I mean, I don't know why people love watching it or seeing it, smelling it, right? Mm -hmm. But we used it 10 years ago as a way to separate ourselves from the hack washes and also tie into or build a bridge into more of the commercial washes. Because when a customer is used to going through a car wash, they're used to that, you know, in the US we have like hot lava and all the lights are going off and everything, (laughs) you know, triple polish, foaming, like, you know. Um, So we always thought that that was kind of cool, right? Um, For me, throwing a soap, and thinking it's going to do something with no mechanical abrasion or nothing else behind it doesn't work. However, the chemical companies are, are kind of catching on to the controversial topic. And now they're building some proper stuff that will clean without some form of touching. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited that the YouTubers have kind of battled that out. Because yeah. now we're getting some stuff that will clean, however slight. Right? Yeah. But let's get, yeah, let's have a little bite to it. Yeah, that's, I think that's probably like... The whole thing in a nutshell is you can put a foam on a car, but if it's a if it's a, like a mild kind of detergent, it's not it doesn't really do that much. And that mm-hmm. we've explored that in the channel. But then if you get something powerful on the car, you can get that car virtually clean before you even go on with mm-hmm. the contact wash. So it's picking, I think, the right product. But I said kind of like eight or nine years ago that it was this the show foam, snow foam gets <laughs> when people see that and they haven't discovered detailing, they see someone snow foaming a car with a foam cannon. The first thing they want to do is like, what's that foam cannon? What's that product? Yep. So it's a massive seller because mm-hmm. people just want to know what you're using and they'll go and buy it because yep. it's cool. It is cool. <laughs> and I always like to tie things back to like a consumer's everyday behavior. I warned you, I'm a little analytical. 
right? <laughs> um, so I always look at like our dream customer, right? Probably owns a Tesla, Porsche, BMW, Mercedes. They go to the barber shop the same way they wash or take care of their car, right? So snow foam for me, that's the hot towel shave, Yeah. right? We all shave at our house, right? A customer's used to that, right? And all the barber shop does is add a hot towel, yeah. which you can do at home, yeah. but you don't, yeah. but you don't. So what's the difference between you, you know, you DIY shaving, you know, or using premium products or going to the barber shop, they literally just have a hot towel. Yeah. So that's the differentiator. It's, it's part of raising it up, isn't it? Because yeah. if you're a detailing yeah. business, you want to do everything you can that's exceptional mm -hmm. from the car wash. Absolutely. Because yeah. You know, you can take the car to the car wash and they'll, they'll do a half decent job of getting it clean very rapidly. But it's those processes that, that you know, that separate kind of detailers from just just valeting a car, mm -hmm. you know. You're pampering the car, aren't you? That's, yeah. The, that's yeah. the whole thing. I it's think. the hot yeah. towel. Yeah. 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 So I think that's probably quite a good summary of it. Yeah. If you use the right materials, it's probably worth doing. There is definitely an element of theatre to it. But we all love that theatre. Mm. We do, even me. You know, you love it. If I'm doing a video and I'm, if I got a little pump sprayer out and pump sprayed it with APC, you let it soak in, pressure wash it off. Probably do the same job. It would do the same job, mm -hmm. but it'd do half the views if I go and put a nice thick layer of foam on it. So, yep. I, I think it's probably harmless. I mean, do you do, you do all the pre-washing in, in your workshops in Peru with the snow foams and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I'm in the side of the commercial side, so I have to impress. The, the customers. Yeah. So, it's yeah. another means to impress, isn't it? Yeah, you, you say it, it's cool to, to see that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's a good way to sell the service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. The next thing USA versus UK <laughs> detail. Let's go. What's better? So, What's, who, who's further ahead? Oh, We're going to oh, have oh, to oh, go oh. deep down the rabbit hole for that. So, <laughs> speaking from the weekend. Yeah. What blew me away at Waxstock was the level of precision everyone who was there was taking. So, I mean, these car owners, and yeah, they're show cars or they're, they're, you're, they're your higher enthusiasts. I mean, like watching them go after their wheels to perfection, we don't see that. We'll have detailers that will do that. Yeah. Right. I feel like maybe in the, in the U S a lot of those guys ended up becoming high end detail shops yeah. where in the UK they, you know, maybe they're in it or maybe, you know, maybe they're a plumber. We don't know, but that car was prepared as if they were the top shop in their city, yeah. which I thought was super cool. Um, the other big difference is you won't, I'm going to get flamed for this and that's fine. You will not see a wax in a detail shop in the U.S. Really? You just won't. Well, I suppose it's going that way mm. over here as well. I mean, guys, detailers still have them. Every detail will have a wax because some yeah. customers will ask for them. But there's no money in putting a wax on a car, doing a wax and wash. Whereas if you put a coating on, you can upsell that and make good money. And you, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. If you're a professional detailer, you've got to figure out ways of... Linking in with the detailing industry to make more business, make more money. Coatings is probably the, the easiest and most effective way of doing it. Um, so yeah, I think, to be honest, I think the US and the UK are probably very, oh, very oh, similar. Yeah, 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 I mean, we've yeah. both got millions of brands. Mm -hmm. that, that, you know, we're oversaturated with brands. That's one problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's probably, for you, it's different. Right. I can't yeah, yeah. think of a Peruvian <laughs> brand so I mean, you could be you could be getting in there first with the mm -hmm. uh, monkey brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you've got it's established already. So like, you start offering the brand now, and you could you could actually make a fortune. But over here, starting a new brand in the UK or the USA, you are exactly. up against it, yeah. aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But I think I think what I what you know my experience when I've travelled to the US has just been to see the sheer scale yeah. at which things yeah. are done. Yeah, I think that is the sort of, you know, an eye-opener when you go there that you just see that, oh, you know, it's massive, it's massive. everything's yeah. big, everything's, you know, uh, uh, done on a different level and a different scale, yeah. you know, and I think that, you know, anyone who's based in the UK to go to shows like SEMA or Mobile Tech in, in, in Orlando would be a great experience because it'll be an eye-opener. You're an example people. of someone, I mean, Rams brand, how old is it now? 
Uh, well, we were, we're about a, just just under a year. And um, you were making headway. So I remember yeah. chatting to Ram well, over the uh, over a year ago when he was telling me about what he was going to do and the, the brand name and showing yeah. me some draft pictures of all the products and all that sort of stuff. You've gone from that now to being, you're set up in the UK, up and running. Yeah. You're now going to be in the US. Yeah, we're already um, in the US, you know, so um, Car Supplies Warehouse stock it, a couple of other guys stock it. Um, we're getting inquiries for training and things like that. So, yeah, we are making headway. And Peru. We're happy, yeah. Peru yeah. 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 having it, you know, which is going to be great. So, yeah, definitely. Um, so it happens, Yeah, it? it does. Yeah. You've just got to put yourself out there um, and just do more. Yeah, suppose, and you, know. you can't start from day one and suddenly just conquer the world. You just have to grow it. And if you can get a foothold in all these countries, then you can start being profitable, yeah. can't you? And you, like we were saying, you don't have to sell 10,000 bottles no. a week. You, you, if you sell 100, you're doing well. So it's yeah. about just growing that brand. But yeah, I mean, it's fierce, isn't it? Because yeah. I've been doing this channel for about eight or nine years, and I've seen so many brands come and go, some good brands come along, and it's hard to sustain it. Mm -hmm. um, which probably leads me on to the next thing, it's, it's social media. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, Chicago Auto Pros do a really good job with, with doing the social media as well. It's an investment. You've got to, you, it's a time and investment thing, but you build it and you build this audience and then you can use it to showcase mm -hmm. what you do, sell yeah. product and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So do you want to tell us a bit about that side of it? Cause yeah. So Jason started, like we mentioned, uh, he started on YouTube simply to train the employees. Yeah. So he was he was early enough and, and smart enough to catch on that he didn't have to show a new employee how to detail an engine every time they hired somebody. Yeah. He simply made a video. And that's what exploded. That's why we're, that's why YouTube's the thing. Yeah. Right? So he would he ended up hosting those videos on YouTube because seven, eight years ago, where else did you put a digital version of the yeah. video? It didn't it's you free, know. isn't it? It's like having a website. You can just direct someone to the link and you've got yeah. that video. Yeah. And then, But suddenly, they changed it all, didn't they? And they monetized it all. Mm -hmm. You could actually create these channels and get money coming in. Yep. So you could get paid by YouTube to promote your own content that is there for you. Like, it's mm -hmm. there for training purposes. Yep. But you can actually get paid to make that content. You can grow an audience. And then you can use that to drive your business, mm -hmm. which is what it's kind of all about. Because um, the internet is endless. It is, yeah. yeah. So he took the how-to for his internal employees into the how-to for these now subscribers, right? The subscribers kept on asking, like followers do, is the, you know the who, what, where, why, when, and how. And he launched Car Supplies Warehouse in order to supply the product that he was showing mm. them how to use. And that led into where we're at now you know, with our detail-wise program. Um, we're actually in negotiations now for you know pretty much Europe and Australia to have local content creators um, pretty much contribute to that ecosystem. But in the US, it's 700 and change every month yeah. of, of, of people who are in the, in the network learning um, everything that Jason and Greg have put through Chicago Auto Pros. It's one of the things I'm, I've probably spoken to you about this before mm. is I'm surprised about how, how few brands in percentages actually invest using social media to its potential mm -hmm. they might do little bits yep. mm. but you don't you only need i keep saying this to the guys up the road you only need really on youtube if you've got ten thousand subscribers mm -hmm. you've got a pool of people that follow you and like what you do that could drive your business yeah. you can, Ten thousand followers could be a profitable sales thing you know yeah. and if you can yeah. get to ten thousand then you can get to a hundred thousand i think when you're a hundred thousand you can it's really powerful yeah. then, isn't it well, think of like, let's go back to the late 90s, right? Before the internet was the internet. If you had a repair shop, realistically, how many customers did you have in a year? A hundred, mm. right? 365 days a year, minus holidays, minus weekends, you know, a couple of cars a day, right? Mm. You may have a hundred recurring customers. And that was the way that service businesses operated for decades, Right? If you had 100, 200 good customers, you're set. You can pass the business mm -hmm. on to your kids. Because yeah. then your customers' kids are now your kids' customers. Yeah. Now, I mean, you know, Chicago Auto Pros has, has five full-time, you know, we don't even know what to call them, like Co we talked about. But content, kind of yeah. working on the yeah. content. Yep. I mean, that's really, really important. Yep. Now, I think that is probably one of the reasons a lot of businesses don't do it. 
because they don't put the resources into it's an investment it. yeah. yeah it's an investment and then you get frustrated you're like okay we think the viewers want to see this yeah, yeah so you know we we did actually i think it was an amazing travel vlog on chicago auto pros to his place hmm. like here here's detailers going around the world to a person they met through detailing learning everything they do these guys and girls take the seats out of cars for an interior detail but everyone for, uh, close more, yeah more and more i didn't <laughs> <laughs> and i didn't believe them so being, again being me i sneaked away from our first training and i watched his customers come pick their cars up on monday afternoon yeah and the first guy it was a it was a what we call them toyota forerunners i don't know what they're in peru but the first guy goes to the back driver's door on the left side of the car because they're normal <laughs> opens the door puts his head on the mat and looks under the driver's seat because he told me, if they, like, they're going to look. And the customers down there were trained for that. You, you should set up in the UK. We could do with you. <laughs> right? we, never, we never take the seats out here. No, it's well, too much it, of a problematic, you know, like airbags it, yeah. and stuff like that. You and know. For us with insurance and lawyers and all that stuff, yeah. like, it would be crazy. But, yeah, you're right. If you don't take the seats out, you, can't, you can only poke around under there with the, the mm -hmm. stick and you can't get it that clean. So, so we thought, that is detailing, though, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. We thought that our followers would just, like, that it would almost go viral. No, nothing. nothing. They were like, go back in the shop and wrap a car. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, huh? Because, like, you know, you try to think of what, uh, of what they want. So it is extremely frustrating. It's so yeah. hard. But you have to stay consistent in doing but at least you're, it. Yeah, but you're trying something there, aren't yeah. you? That's what I see. It's like every time you try something different, you roll the dice. Yeah. And 99 times when you roll the dice, it, it, yeah. it flunks. Yeah. Every now and then you'll roll the dice and you'll get something really cool. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to keep continuing. I talk about this. You've got to just keep yeah. being prepared to try something yeah. different. Um, and if it fails, it fails. I mean, so, my experience was the, the, the video... You know, I got a videographer involved. We got like proper sound, videos, lighting, everything. We filmed, uh, uh, I think probably about 10, 15 videos. He didn't do anything. And then one day I just I got my iPhone out, started filming on that. And it was probably the worst video. video. Yeah, that, that was, yeah, and that was the Mercedes one that mm -hmm. just blew up. It yeah, just, it's, it's, it's so sitting strange. at about 5 million views now. And, and it, you can't recreate it though. Because no. you, you could say, that, oh, that one went viral. And I was doing that on the Mercedes. Right, I'll do it again. And then you do it again, it's just nothing happens. Reason, nothing just happens. So it's a bit it's of a bizarre, mind field, yeah. but I think, like you said, you just got to be consistent and just keep going, and then hopefully, yeah. It's know, like fishing at every day. I also think one of the secrets, though, right, and it's no secret anymore, you do what you want to do. Yeah. I think, yeah. you know, you did it, you know, Matt from Obsessed with yeah. you mentioned, Jason. Yeah. The guys who, re you know, Phil Miranda, the guys who really do their thing, yeah. it's their thing. And, like, Deep down inside, you care. But, yeah. you know, because we're humans, so, like, you know, the, one of the comments is going to really get you. Oh, the comments, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. But and, for the most part, when yeah. you just do your thing, and it's true, it's real, I feel like that's what ends up bringing it to the next level, yeah. you know? Yeah. A, a lot of the things where, you know, guys or girls are paying to play on social media, you know, yeah, it may get 15 million views, but what did it really do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, you know, especially in the product game or in the service game, you really want to convert that. Mm -hmm. I would rather have 500 views that converted 100 people for either long term value or, you know, qu a quick buck than 5 yeah. million views because it's cool. I'll go for 5 million. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more money <laughs> well, but I mean, you're in a different place. No, I know, I yeah. know what you mean. But I think a lot of the shops start. There, there are, I mean, it's like the shorts content we were talking about. They can do massive views, mm -hmm. but yeah, they don't really do too much. You don't make much money from them. They can drive your channel a little bit, but it's not, you've got to balance it up, I think. Mm -hmm. You've got, you got to do some gump where you think it might go viral. I try and do some gump, yeah. you know, stupid stuff. That just mm. might go viral. I'm pretty good at that. It just doesn't go viral. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have a go at that, and then you do the stuff, the core of kind of what you're about on the channel, and uh, yeah, just try to keep it going because it is hard, isn't it? It's hard mm -hmm. to keep it going because there's just more channels every week. Yeah. There's probably another ten channels, you know, hundred channels now. And it's just exploding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's one of the challenges with social media. But I think. You know, you guys have been doing it a long while. I remember, I'm saying, I remember mm -hmm. your ten thousand dollar detail video, which was brilliant. It was really mm -hmm. well put together as well, really well edited. It was a really good video. Mm -hmm. But you could do it again, and it will do ten thousand views. Yep, <laughs> that's it. Yep. But so you just got to keep trying stuff. Well, that's you know, again, going back to being analytical. 
we look at that and we bring in the ROI of having five people on the, on the media team and this and that. And it's like, I mean, it, it can really hurt your feelings. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could be like, oh, cool. We did a $10,000 detail and, you know, maybe it was 150 man hours by the time the whole project's all said and done. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's like one of the reasons we got into the smaller dry ice machines was, you know, we had a problem with that one. You know, we were on, Jason was under the car for like three days. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's got to be a better way to do it. So like, you know, kind of whenever you do it, it things emerge, which is super cool. Yeah. And you know, this industry doesn't, it never stops. Yeah. Which is super, like, I think that's what keeps us going. Because this is traveling all over and doing this. People think it's great. And it is. Yeah. But it is exhausting. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We've been sleeping out, like literally in bunk beds at Ram's <laughs> house. <laughs> this is even like Kate's bunk beds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not all, you know, you see us in the clarity. Two, two guys, their feet yeah. poking out. <laughs> so. Well, I'm going to put you guys on the spot now. I want to know your top three professional detailing tips that you apply so that your business is kind of successful. What are three guiding rules or tips? Well, I think social media is, a, is the first tip. You have to explore that. Yeah. Because... Eric says it's all about consistency. So, I mean, two years ago I make my own videos, and today we have a team who edit, take photos. You've and got everything. a team as well. I'm the only yeah. one with no team. <laughs> yeah, I need a team. But you have the most. You're mirror team. That's John. weird. <laughs> well, yeah, I've been doing it a bit longer, but but yeah. So your tip, I'm definitely investing in social media to drive yeah. your business. Yeah. Then uh, train your your. Your, my monkeys or your team. Yeah. <laughs> Training is it. really important. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I travel around the, the world training, making trainings and taking trainings to with you your own so knowledge. And yeah. 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 And use good products, maybe. Yeah. Maybe no. It's really important because, I mean, if you use something that really works, you you will get the results. So, yeah. I mean... I think you, have to, to, you have to, as a, a top-tier brand that's doing detailing, you can't get away with using cheap valeting products, really, unless you're going to pour them in a different bottle. Not tell, <laughs> not tell people. You have to pick a brand, I think, that you're going to use and back, and you've gone with mm-hmm. G-Technic, and then people know what you're about then. And you can, like I say, you can bolt the strength of that brand onto the side of your business as well. So the G-Technic accreditation is a good thing to have, isn't it, if you're doing coating? So there's three good bits of advice there, guys. Social media, training, and using good products. So that's your three. What are yes, the three? So I'm going to flip it. Now, we're talking professionals, right? Yeah. We're not talking like weekend guys? Yeah, yeah full-time professional. Okay. So the number one rule, by far, is to know your numbers. You have to understand to... I mean, we're talking basic, I'm a napkin math guy. A basic napkin math, you have to know your numbers. You have to think, okay, I want to try a new snow foam. Where are you taking the money from? It's fun, it's cool, it's exciting, right? But is it hurting your business long term? Because most of the shops that we work with when we start, they are going out of business slowly. They don't know it yet. Because they're spending too much money. Yeah? They're mm-hmm. well, either spending too much or they're spending too much time and not charging enough, so on and so forth. So you, so, so looking, analyzing yep. how the business is functioning. Absolutely. Costs in and out and how much money you're making. No. Number two? Process. So this is very textbook business right here. I'm not, I'm not inventing anything or changing the wheel here. <laughs> right? But Larry Casilla from Ammo. Um, said it best. This was forever ago. It was a meeting of the minds. It was like one of the first like U.S. detailing masterminds, uh, early SEMA, probably seven, eight years ago. Um, he, you know, being a one man show, he literally said, he's like, "Hey guys, what happens if you get in a car accident or break your hand? Simply, like you fall on the ice in the north and you break your hand. Can you detail what happens?" And number three. So number three is your business sellable. So can you take the first two things and can you go to someone on the street and ask them if they would like to buy your business? The so better has, your like some kind of exit strategy. Some, some kind of exit strategy. Yeah, because you, yeah, I mean, assuming the, the, the one man band kind of thing is where mm-hmm. everyone tends to start, isn't it? How do you go from a one man band cleaning mm-hmm. cars? Because you don't want to do it forever. 
You can't. Like, you no, can't. You can't. Yeah. yeah. You want to be able to scale it, mm. scale it up, and then create a business that you can sell ultimately. Mm. Um, so that's really important, and that's I, I've got no idea how you do that. But I suppose for me, it's about my channel rather than actually doing it. But I mean, all I know that actually doing it day in day out is the most punishing, knackering thing <laughs> ever. <laughs> So yeah, you definitely, it happens with lots of details, doesn't it? You see them, they start, probably start a detailing cars and then after a few years of doing it, they'll either have someone else do the detailing, they'll have a detailing range, or they'll have moved on to like coatings and, PDF. you know. Yeah, and then yeah. you make that break from being a mobile detailer to then having a, a studio. And then once you've got that studio, you've got all sorts of opportunities. You can sell mm -hmm. stuff, you, you know. So that's really cool. So, Ram. <laughs> well, as a as a as as now a brand owner and a and a, and a product owner, um, one of the big things for me has been to try and simplify the product range, right? Because leather repair is a bit of a minefield for most people. They've never done it. There's not as much information, help, knowledge, training as there is about general detailing. So um, the biggest thing for me has been how can I simplify the product range so mm. that it becomes easier for people to understand. Right? As, much as, as much as I'd like every detailer in the world to be doing leather repairs on a daily basis, look, let's be realistic, leather repair is an add-on service. It's, that's, where, it's, that's where it's at. It's a currently. niche within detailing, isn't exactly. it? But mm -hmm. it's, it's a profitable niche. It's, it is. And it can drive uh, incremental revenue and uh, um, you know, a lot of, um, uh, like what we were saying, what makes you separate from your average car wash, yeah. right? It's being able to offer these kind of services that they're not going to be able to, probably will never do, yeah. right? Because they're fo focusing on numbers, in and out cars. Um, so I think for me, what I want to do is, as a brand owner, simplify the product range so it becomes easy for these guys to understand. Provide, the second thing is provide the training, the help, follow-up support um, that is big and how I'm constantly thinking now of ways of how we can do that so that it is not eating away at the business to the point where it starts hurting you but you want to be there for your customers as well so we're looking at sort of using technology to be able to provide that sort of help and support it sort of takes resources though it's exactly. very hard for it to happen instantly isn't it yeah yeah you know and the third um the third thing is just you know touching back to what we were speaking about earlier is just social media yeah. you know um, you start a brand you know your products are good or you're convinced that you know you can help people but how can you now spread this message and tell as many people um, in the world saying look and, and you know that we're here and I think social media is the big thing and it's it's a minefield we're still learning about it mm -hmm. but to be consistent you know. but you can, the thing is you can learn on the job with it can't you yes. and you can do it for the cost of a smartphone yeah. That's, that's true. You need. That's true. If you really wanted to I just do, get going, I that's not complicated. You're, you're this is a rare that. occasion. It's because I've got guests. I've actually yeah. busted out the main camera. <laughs> um, is that is that recording? It looks like yeah, it, it is. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay, so we've done our top threes. Now what I want to do is top three products of all time detailing products. I like putting these guys on the spot. Mm. Top three detailing products that you've you've used. You know, um, they can't all be G Technic. <laughs> <laughs> well, <coughs> you want the name or just yeah the name yeah the yeah name. well Crystal Sinomotra for me is that's, that's G Technic <laughs> yeah <laughs> you said they can't all be okay. yeah. 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 yeah you got me there <laughs> and yeah. are we allowed to have the same ones yeah yeah okay yeah. and I think it's the best uh, ceramic coating that I try and I try a lot of. Um, second, maybe, um, I, I'm using a good shampoo, the brand is Kent. Kent? Kent. Well, is that a UK brand or American? No, it's from Europe, I don't know, I don't know where, but <laughs> <laughs> Kent, uh, wash shampoo is really good, really, it works really good for the business. Um, the, the third. Yeah. Third, yeah, mm -hmm. third, yeah, yeah. Your English is getting so good. It's really bad. <laughs> um, I love W seven of G Technic. <laughs> oh, is that, I'm yeah. getting a thing here. No, I I I try Tarex. I try the Geo. I don't know the name of the tar remover, but tar, tar. 
<laughs> uh, uh, W7 really works, yeah, yeah. really safe to use. And yeah, that's my top three. Okay, brilliant. Yourself? I was going to drop Ultra because he said it. Uh, but again, in, in the world of coatings, everyone wants to hear about the coatings. I told him on the way here. Mm -hmm. Right? And yes, you know, my heart is with G-Technic, right? But I, I'm, I'm on to other things. Ultra, I, you, yeah, you just can't. It's good coaching. It is just, I mean, it, it, what it does is you, you, you got If you haven't tried it, you got to try it. Slick to buff, I think, is the important thing with coating. Yeah, and just, I mean, it, it's there. It's there. You know it's there, you know. Um, second, so this is an interesting one. Um, I am lazy. Yeah, I don't hide that. Me too. <laughs> um, my personal car is even when I was with G Technic, sorry, Robert, um, I never coded them because I'm <laughs> lazy. Um, purist from Sweden's P1 spray on, hose off, spray sealant. I tried it, I tried everything. I came back a couple hours later, saw the truck in the driveway, and I was like, what? It looked like I did a three step correction and multi-layer ceramic coating, and it lasts, yeah. it lasts. And you just spray it on and rinse it off and then dry the car. I don't even spray it on because I'm so lazy. I spray it in the hose, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I just rinse it off. Those <laughs> products really, those spray and rinse mm, products are I, one of the best things that have come to the forefront in the yep. last 10 years. Yep. They've been around for a long time. They have, they have. They are, I mean, they are just brilliant. Yeah. If you don't have one that you like, and I will give my product sort of um, overall, right? It needs to be leading class. It has to be readily available. And most importantly, you have to like using it. Yeah. All right. I don't care what the internet says or what all of us say about a product. If you can't get it, yeah. if it's not leading class and you, you know, you don't like using it, you're going to think it sucks. <clears throat> um, third, and there's a lot of them, um, shine supply wise guy as a tire cleaner, one to one, the bang for the buck. There's nothing that will clean a tire like that product. And I'm a big tire dressing guy, so in order to get my result I'm looking for, Shine Supply Wise guy on the tire. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's some new ones there to check some of those out. Rain, no geist. No geist. That's going to be very, very difficult. But you have three, I, you have three but, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, um, I'm not a detailer, right? Never have been, but having spent a lot of time around you guys, I'm, gay, I'm, I'm obviously being influenced. Um, so the biggest, the biggest that. improvement that I have made in my personal life is when I bought a new electric car this year, I've made a conscious decision to not take it to the hand car wash guys. So I don't have a top product, but I have a top advice. Uh, right? the, top, the top hand car wash. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't do that. See, I think that's, that's made a big difference. And the best product that I've come across is just spotless water. I yeah. don't think, you know, uh, that has been a discovery. Like when I first washed my car with uh, spotless water. I, j I was just blown away by the results of it. Not getting all the water spots. Not getting all the water stuff. spots. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's fair, a big fair comment. You know, so I'm not a I've, never, just... I've never used those, but oof, I think it, it if, was, if that was an upgrade yeah. that I was going to do here, perhaps doing that would be maybe the best yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and try the guy's leather cleaner. I think, I think that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> It is. That's <laughs> true, mate. What's, and the third one, non geist Non geist Since I'm water, guys. What? <laughs> okay. Something else. Now, hand car wash. That was a. That was an advice. Don't go there. Oh, right. Wash your car at home. That's that's. Maybe that, that, <laughs> oh, wax right. or something you love. Um, wax, I love. Uh, what I've started using uh, recently is a Meguiar's. I don't even know the name. It's a blue color. Oh, the hybrid. Like the hybrid yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah, I like that. You know, I've got. I've gone out and got a black car as well. So. Uh, I'm told. I'm, I'm. I'm now discovering. I'm. I'm parking under a tree every day as well because I can't escape that. So I've. I'm up against it at the moment. You know? That's good. That's three recommendations there, guys. So it's the top three from everyone. There's something else I was going to ask you as well. Oh, here's another controversial thing. It's interesting. <laughs> Probably less relevant from you. Okay. What do you think about the two bucket wash method? Do you use it in your stores? Because I. That's always of interest. I mean. Because I. I don't. I just use one bucket. Um, I'm. I'm uh, you know, I just don't see the benefit. But mm. I, the, the thing for me is I don't have to, you know, if I had a store and I was using, and I wasn't washing with two buckets, someone sooner or later would discredit my business because I'm not doing it. So do you mm. use 
two bucket wash method with all and, your stores. I mean, if you don't have, if you don't have a pressure washer and all the tools that you need to, to, to do it professionally, I, I think the two buckets technique is the, it's the best way to, Might help to avoid actually. Yeah, scratches. Yeah, if you're not pre-washing it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's quite I a think good point. It works. I mean, people who just want to, to wash the car once <laughs> yeah. a week, if you if you don't have all the tools, yeah, I mean it's a good way to minimize. Do you scratches. do it with your stores stores though, or not? Because you're pre, you're pre washing everything, blasting it yeah. down, then contact. I make the old process. I use the uh, grits in the bucket. The grits. Yeah. Would yeah. you have a rinse bucket though? Yeah, you do. So yeah. you yeah. do do it. Okay, yeah. and that's because if you didn't, you would get criticized, would you? Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so that's what I, the I way mean, I feel about most detail is they works. do it because it's a sensible kind of thing to do. How, how do you feel about it? Well, um, we can talk about this for an hour. I'm trying <laughs> to cut it down. So I just traded in. Um, I had one of the first Ford Mavericks in the southeast. Um, great little truck, kind of car, kind of truck. Um, really soft paint, really, really soft everything. Not a high quality build car, truck. Um, I had a... 13,000 miles on it in 18 months. I washed it almost every Saturday. So I, I calculated about 40 and change washes in the Southeast, in Georgia, super hot in the summer, mild in the winter, but no salt, um, none of that stuff. Like yourself, one bucket, grit guard, garden hose, no pressure washer. Quality process, quality supplies. The truck looked better than any truck on the lot when it got there. Did it have some micro marring in it and whatnot? Yes, but 99% of it, I will admit, was from just improper drying. Yeah, yeah. Right? And people don't realize that most of the issues come from drying. Yeah, well, you're buffing on the car and there's dust on it. That's potentially well, scratching. That or there's no lubrication from a soap or anything else. Yeah. Um, so me personally, in my driveway, that's my jam. I mean, it's no secret. I've talked about it in most of our trainings. If I, however, was building out a studio or a center, I'm not going to go crazy on the menu like we used to do years ago. I use three buckets with grit guards and this GSM towel and this and that. Mm. Chill out with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But if you want to market that you are that professional, back to the snow foam question, right? You should have, and for efficiency's sake, every bucket should be on a dolly. Every bucket should follow you around the car. Right, that's what it's built for. It's not built to look cool, but you gotta make it look cool too. Mm -hmm. In a in, in a studio. So you you similar sort of take. It's it's something you should you probably have to do as a professional mm -hmm. detailing outfit because there might be some there might be some benefits there. And if you didn't do it, you'd get so much stick, wouldn't you? Yeah, you get so much stick. But you so don't need you don't need the clear bucket in the background of your Instagram photo, right? But you should have a clean. Like it should look okay. Like we have the Home Depots and the buckets are orange. You know that's one of the mm -hmm. one of the more important things is the cleanup, isn't it? Yeah. Keeping the place clean because you can end up with just a mess because you're detailing cars all the time. Mm -hmm. But at the end of each day, if you clean up, get it back to a certain standard, a bit like a kitchen. Oh, you know, yeah, that's yeah. probably worse. And cleaning out all your tools. Not the the buckets get full up with like grit, don't they? And you can mm -hmm. you can leave it in there, or you can once you know wash yep. it at the end of the day, clean all your stuff out. So a bit like looking after pads, I suppose you've got to look after your tools and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So that's been really interesting, guys. We've been talking for probably near, nearly an hour, um, and it's been great just to pick mm -hmm. your brains on detailing. Really, really interesting. And you've all got slightly different view on all of this, and mm -hmm. uh, I think we've got some good content there, guys. Yeah. So thanks very much, and thank you. Can we just run through all your socials before we finish the video? So where can they find you, Ben? Instagram, Guys Leather Care. YouTube, Guys Leather Care. Facebook, Guys Leather Care. Website, leathercare.com. Have I just gone overboard now? No, no. <laughs> you're nearly consistent until yeah. the leather care. <laughs> and yourself? So quickest and easiest on YouTube, Chicago Auto Pros channel. You know, give it a like, give it a subscribe. That's where most of our stuff lives. All the links are right there below. If you want to jump on the web, carsuppliesweharehouse.com. Both of those will be on all your socials as well. Brilliant. And yourself? On YouTube, we are Monkey Auto Detailing. In, on Instagram, Monkey Auto Detailing and Monkey Auto Body Shop. It's the same on Facebook. But M O N K Y. Oh, and, yeah. M O N K Y. Uh, on the, in, uh, our website, it's www.monkey.com.p. 
Okay. I'll link them all as well so you can click them. Yeah. We'll do that at the end of the video. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. John, thank you so much. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Great.